Interlocutory injunctions are particularly important in the context of intellectual property litigation. An interlocutory injunction is an order that prohibits a party from taking a particular course of action prior to the ultimate question of litigation being finalised. This could be the restraint of the right to publish or release information. It could also prohibit a company from entering a particular market or releasing a particular product. An interlocutory injunction can also impute a positive obligation to undertake a particular course of action. In order for an interlocutory injunction to be granted, the applicant needs to satisfy two elements. Firstly, they must show that they have a prima facie case to be tried. Secondly, they must show that the balance of convenience is in their favour. Firstly, though, they need to show that there is some legal or equitable right capable of being determined at trial. What is required under the first element of this test has long been subject to much judicial toing and froing. However, it was finally settled in the case of Australian Broadcasting Corporation and O'Neill, where the High Court held that the applicant must show that they have a prima facie case and that it was no different to the previous test of being a serious question. This didn't mean that the applicant needed to show that success in litigation was assured, just needed to be sufficiently likely to justify in the circumstances the preservation of the status quo pending trial. This threshold was contingent on various rights at play in an individual piece of litigation and therefore turned on the facts. In Beecham, it was held that the probability required depended upon the nature of the rights the plaintiff asserted and the practical consequences likely to flow from the order sought. An empirical analysis of interlocutory injunction cases relating to patents demonstrated that courts are largely unwilling to dismiss the notion that an applicant has a prima facie case, even where it's claimed by the respondent party that there was an invalid patent. The same is true for where people allege that there is invalid copyright or trademark. This means that cases will often turn on who can prove the balance of convenience and its associated associated discretionary factors are in their favour. While it's previously been considered its own discrete category, it is now common to consider the suitability of damages under the balance of convenience heading. It is mandatory for the court to consider whether damages would be an adequate remedy before allowing for an interlocutory injunction. The court will consider whether a plaintiff would be in all material respects in as good a position if they were confined to the damages remedy as they would be if an injunction were granted. In order for a defendant to ensure a court would order against an interlocutory injunction on this basis, they would need to demonstrate the capacity to cover whatever hypothetical damages might be owing once the ultimate question of litigation is finalised. Where a person who commences the carrying on of a business and where that business is subject to the patent rights of another, a person who enters a market with their eyes open and with disregard for the obligations that flow from that other person's intellectual property rights will likely be punished for by a court where those matters come before it asking for an interlocutory injunction. That's because, ultimately, these are issues of equity and the usual maxims will apply. Another practical consideration is the likelihood of damage occurring. In the snack foods case, it was held that interlocutory relief shouldn't be relief provided to the applicant because the alleged damages were far too speculative, whereas the respondent could point to serious harms that would, accrue, would occur to its company if the order was granted. Ultimately, this question is contingent on the facts, and you'll have to assess each case on its merits. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson.